Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Corey. I'm back with the existing person, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> still breathing. Still breathing. Still here. Still quite humble, thanks to yeah. my <laughs> lack of adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> my introductory, my uh, 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 salutation, as it were. Um, the, the, the alive, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Truth. It is. It's, it's accurate. Today we are going to be spending more time on Azure Functions. Azure Functions and serverless, or just Azure Functions. Pretty. Time? We're just going to focus on Azure Functions okay, this time. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So what do we? So you, you, there's some newness that there you is. want to talk about. There is. This okay. is this is fairly hot off the press. Uh, so one of the things with Azure Functions, so we mentioned it in the last episode, which is if you haven't watched. You need to definitely. It's about it's about a minute of value with seven <laughs> minutes of garbage. So that better than the average it. Tuesday. <laughs> <with Corey. laughs> Twice as wow. good. Uh, wow. So with that, it's uh, some cold. Anyway, go it on. is. Uh, so one of the challenges that happens when you're dealing with Azure Functions in general and serverless functions. This isn't unique to Azure. Is what if I have a process that is complex or long running, yes. and I need to manage that entire process mm -hmm. now? Before I even go further, we showed you in the last one Azure Logic Apps, which is a phenomenal thing to orchestrate across different functions, yes. and it does have some capabilities like looping. Yes. But there are still some patterns like uh, if you have a big file that comes in, mm -hmm. and let's say you have a thousand customer records, and you need to go split all of those thousand of records into individual executions. You'd like to not have to pull it in every time. And then aggregate it back yeah, in, yeah. yeah. So if you do this by hand today, or even with Logic Apps, it can get very complicated. So there's a new piece of functionality for Azure Functions called Durable Functions. Beautiful. Got it. You got it. You uh, nailed that. I did. And so what Durable lets you do is write an orchestration piece all within your function. So this is in C Sharp, no visual designer. You code this thing, but it can run forever. Uh, it can run as long as you want, and it's managing the state and making sure, like, oh, hey, I just spit out a thousand words. So workers. it doesn't have a time limit for how long it runs. That's right. That's really the key point. Yep. Okay. It's exactly it. And you said C sharp, but not exclusively C sharp or exclusively C sharp? Great question. Thank so, you. So, and I actually don't know the answer, which is why it is yeah. scary. Uh, so there's two pieces to kind of a durable function application. One are the actions that you take, like go process this record. Those actions or activities can be written in any of the languages supported by Azure Functions. Okay, so JavaScript, JS, Java, C Sharp. Java, whatever, got it. For the time being, the orchestration piece, the thing that tells you what to do, can only be written in C Sharp. But we are working on making it accessible for other languages. Okay. So you viewers, tweet us and let us know which languages you would like to see first. Is that fair? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm contemplating canceling the whole show now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but C Sharp is a beautiful language. Please tweet, shh. Please tweet us back the recommendations that you have for languages. Yeah. I have, I have, I'll have some words with these guys. Yeah. Please, proceed. So uh, I'm going to show you a quick <laughs> sample app right now just to show you what the, one of these looks like. So this one's kind of a fun scenario. I have here on my desktop, this is my phone messaging app. Okay, because what I wanted to do. <laughs> big party behind us, apparently. Yeah, I know, and we yeah. weren't invited. Yeah, boy, did the, uh, <laughs> the functions guys never get invited. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do here was I, I don't know if you've heard of cryptocurrencies. I have any. Like Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. Ethereum. Uh, Thank blockchain. you for, again, enunciating very well. Yes. But you're really killing the enunciation of the show. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do is. Can you watch the price of a coin? Like, I want to get an alert. I want to get a text message alert if Bitcoin crosses a certain threshold or if Ethereum crosses a threshold. So I want to do this serverlessly. And what I want to do, I'll actually just show you now. I'm going to send a text that right. says, like, watch Bitcoin to tell me if it crosses, I don't know, $15,000 for right now. I'm sending that text. It's firing off an Azure function. And what you're going to notice is it's going to send me back a response here that says, we're now watching this coin for you. Uh, so what you'll see is it actually responded back to me. It said, hey, I'm now watching the price of this. I will send you a text message alert if it crosses it. And if you want to stop watching, text this. Now, I don't want to just watch for five minutes. I actually want to watch for like a week or two weeks to know like when should I sell all my uh -huh, stuff. Uh -huh, okay? uh -huh. So what's powering this behind the scenes is a durable function. Okay. So this is the durable function behind the scenes. And this is what the type of stuff you can write. So I've been able to write in this durable orchestrator this while loop that says continue to do this Very action cool. while my the current price is less than the price that I set, 
and while the timeout hasn't been reached, because I set a timeout, I only want this to watch for like a week, and if it's more than a week and it doesn't cross it, just quit working. Uh, but I, you, like, I'm watching Bitcoin here. I could just as easily say like, stock hey, uh, stock market, or like go ping my site, or watch a news feed, or like any type of watcher, or something yeah. where I'm spinning up a worker and I just yeah, want totally. to live. Uh, so I sleep for 15 minutes, wake up, get yep. the current price, and just keep doing so this over and over. So let me ask you this, and yep. this again, we. I, I should have probably prepped on this question ahead mm. of time. Why would you use this versus like building your own service, right? Like yep. if you're gonna run it for this long period of time and mm. it's just kind of sitting there, right? Like is it still serverless? Mm. Let, let me, ser I mean, let's get into some theory here. Yes, shall we? yeah, for sure. So the interesting thing about durable functions behind the scenes is it actually only is running and you're only getting billed when an actual action is taking place. Okay. So when I say sleep for 15 minutes here, we actually scale down to zero. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we get rid of everything. So, for so it is minutes. very much in people's. So while they do have durable functions, these types of listener types of functions, mm. it's very important for people to be smart about how they put their sleeps in because yeah. if they're uh, or their wait periods. Sure. Because if they are going to do these wait periods, they're not going to get charged, and so that then makes it sort of an ongoing, uh, ongoing cyclical event. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, the, is that a? Is that a? That's fair. That's fair. A good way to think uh, about it, Jeff. And way maybe you haven't thought about it. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I've I've learned something today. <laughs> uh, so the 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 reason potentially you'd want to do this is one like I can have this long running process without having to worry about managing to make sure like is my server alive all the time? Is my service yeah, alive? Sure. Uh, and then there's patterns that like if you're using functions like here I'm doing a loop. Maybe I'm just orchestrating a call to a bunch of different functions. Like if you're familiar with like dependency injection where you want to have a bunch of dependencies but dynamically call them, you can do that dynamic kind of dependency of functions thing here and have it be serverless. So this thing's running, but at the same time, because it's only waking up every 15 minutes, it's still super inexpensive. And if I went crazy and I started watching for a bunch of coins, like now I want to watch to see if Cory coin, which is a hot new coin on the market, it is. Uh, crosses, everyone wants, everyone wants what's it at now, coin. a billion? So yeah. I'm going to see if it crosses two billion. Do it. Uh, I could go and set up a bunch of these watchers, and it's going to be able to dynamically scale to as many as I need. There you go. Uh, so now it's watching Cory Coin, which probably threw an exception behind the scenes, unless this coin actually exists. Exists, it probably, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's durable functions. There's there's it's it's a more advanced feature of Azure Functions for sure. Uh, but if you are using Azure Functions, if you want any sort of orchestration, that this might be the right fit. Uh, there's a few patterns that we recommend. This is really good for. We've got some good samples out there. Uh, but I did want to show it um, because it, it can be a powerful tool when you want something serverless, but you need it to be a little bit longer or more stateful uh, than a traditional ephemeral function. Mm. You like that word there, ephemeral? That's, that's nice. Yeah. That was the word of the day today. It was? <laughs> no, I don't. So, <laughs> wee -wee <laughs> <laughs> uh, pulling us back from Pee Wee Herman, yeah. <laughs> uh, you didn't even know that was from Pee Wee Herman, did Before you? my time, Corey. Yeah, Before my time. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, all right. Well, this has been, I mean, really fun. Thank you, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jeff, Pack thank you. me back again. <laughs> so, okay, so we should expect... Uh, so very cool. Uh, so basically, again, these um, uh, durable functions uh, be able to take advantage of uh, sort of ongoing functions. Yep. Still pay for as you use it, which is super valuable and very different from if you set this up as a service that's running like on a VM or what have you. Yep. Um, and uh, you can have it run back-end code that's any of the languages. Mm -hmm. uh, this front-end code is uh, .NET only at that's this correct. point. Yep. But, but we'll be supporting other languages in the soon future. In the soon future. There you go. All right. And um, thank you so much for having And thank you guys so much for joining. I hope this was a fun show for you as much as it was for us. Um, and uh, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be in touch. So hit us up at uh, Azure TWC, hashtag Azure TWC. Ask us questions, ask us comments, and uh, we'll get back to you. So with that, have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye-bye. You check the batteries this time? I replaced them. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, no. I mean, it's worth our time, though. Thanks a lot, Rick. I'm talking about a thing called durable functions in this one. The bank robber was denied a bank loan. <laughs> <laughs> the scorpion was denied a bank loan. Ayo, <laughs> ayo, what the ayo. What are you doing now? Durable functions. Have you heard of this? Durable functions. <laughs> That's the one. Make sure to enunciate the durable. Durable.
A lot of people get tripped up. They say durable. 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 Fun. Not, that's not, not durable. what this is. That is something else. That's actually a, a beautiful, a beautiful soup <laughs> with, with rice and chicken. Durable, durable functions from Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> this is durable. Functions. Durable functions. Jeff, you've stopped and started a new recording now. <laughs>